Russia is ready to exchange the lives of its soldiers on the territory, and the record losses in October of this year are proof of this. Ukrainian military expert Vladislav Zeleznev spoke about this on the air of the Freedom TV channel. According to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, in October of this year, the Russian occupation army suffered record losses, more than 41,000 soldiers. This is certainly a lot. For comparison, for almost the entire year of 2022, the losses of the Russian army amounted to only twice as much, just over 90,000. Therefore, these are not just big losses. These are huge losses, and I think that they are very sensitive for the Russian army. However, against this backdrop, Russian dictator Putin is in no hurry to announce another wave of mobilization and is forced to turn to the North Korean government for military personnel, the military expert noted. He emphasized that in the future, in the next one or two months, Russians will continue to experience serious losses. Currently, the number of Russian citizens entering the recruitment campaign as mobilized or called up for military service under a contract is much less than the number of those killed by the Ukrainian Defense Forces. Of course, these trends are predetermined, including by the intensity of military operations. After all, de facto, fierce combat clashes are currently taking place on seven sections of the front. Somewhere they are larger scale, such as, for example, the Kurakovskoy or Pokrovskoy directions. Somewhere the combat clashes are slightly less intense, but they are still hot. We are talking primarily about the Chasovoya area and the Limansky direction, the Kupiansk direction and the south of the Zaporizhia region. Quite serious dynamics are also observed on the territory of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. That is, all this together gives that very colossal level of losses for the Russian army, the guest of the broadcast explained. According to him, at present, the Kremlin regime, Putin personally and the military leadership of the Russian Federation are ready to exchange the lives of their soldiers for the desired square kilometers of Ukrainian territory. But how long will these same Russian or even North Korean soldiers be enough to carry out these missions? I have a fairly well-founded doubt. After all, everything in this world eventually has its final point, its end, and the Russians, in fact, wastefully using manpower on such a scale may end up with nothing when they will physically have nothing to attack with or even defend with. Vladislav Zeleznev concluded. A suspected militant was killed in a gunfight with government forces in Srinagar in Indian-administered Kashmir, officials said Saturday. Police and paramilitary soldiers exchanged fire with at least one militant after troops cordoned off a neighborhood on a tip that he was hiding in a house in the region's main city of Srinagar. Residents said the troops torched the home where the rebel was trapped, a common tactic employed by Indian troops in the Himalayan region. There was no independent confirmation of the incident. In a separate incident, Soldiers intercepted a group of militants in a forested area in southern Anantnag district on Saturday, leading to a gun battle that killed two rebels. India and Pakistan each administer a part of Kashmir, but both claim the territory in its entirety. The nuclear-armed rivals have fought two of their three wars over the territory since they gained independence from British colonial rule in 1947. Militants in the Indian portion of Kashmir have been fighting New Delhi's rule since 1989. Many Muslim Kashmiris support the rebels' goal of uniting the territory, either under Pakistani rule or as an independent country. India insists the Kashmir militancy is Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. Pakistan denies the charge, and many Kashmiris consider it a legitimate freedom struggle. Tens of thousands of civilians, rebels and government forces have been killed in the conflict.
Ha? Gel dimi? Residents on Friday assessed the damage caused to their town after flooding devastated Spain's Valencia region. Two days after the deluge started on Tuesday, authorities say they have recovered 158 bodies and continue to search for an unknown number of missing people. The damage recalled the aftermath of a tsunami, with survivors left to pick up the pieces as they mourn their loved ones. In the badly hit town of Chiva, where it rained more in eight hours than it had in the preceding 20 months, local resident, Juan Vicente Perez, wept as he pointed out the remains of his partially collapsed house. I have been there all my life, all my memories are there, my parents live there, they all live there, and now in one night it is all gone, he said. He said he and his wife fled to a neighbor's house just minutes before his own home was hit by the floods. He said there was no warning from the authorities but believed that everyone was taken by surprise by the ferocity of the flash floods that swept away everything in their path. Another local resident said people were starting to do what they could to clean up the town. While authorities were giving out food, water and clothes, there was still no water, gas or electricity, the local said. This week's flash floods are also Spain's deadliest natural tragedy in living memory, surpassing the flood that swept away a campsite along the Gallego River in Baescas, in the northwest, killing 87 people in August 1996.